Ayo. Plastic surgery check. There are no more wheelchairs available. Hello. It has been a hot minute since I've done a commentary video, but there is a topic that is really important that I want to address. Basically, as someone who only watches TikTok food videos, the trend of BBL was so powerful that it appeared on my feed. No jokes, I literally wondered if BBL stood for bubble waffles. So anywho, today I not only want to talk about the BBL epidemic, but also chat with y'all about the evolution of the ideal body type, male gaze, toxic body trends in both Western and the Eastern culture, and some thoughts on how as girls, we can navigate ourselves in the waves of pressure to conform with the ever-evolving ideal body shape. What is the BBL epidemic? Okay, for those of you who the trend has not approached yet, Lucky you. BBL stands for Brazilian Butt Lift, which is a cosmetic surgery that involves two parts, liposuction and augmentation. Basically sucking fat from areas of your body such as your hips, stomach, thighs, and then the processed fat gets injected into your buttocks. As painful as it sounds, it probably really is. The procedure involves multiple incisions to the skin, placement of tubes inside you, stitches, bleeding. And not a surprise, it's the most dangerous cosmetic surgery. So how the hell did this become a normalized trend on TikTok? The line to get to Atlanta, 95% of the passengers just got a BBL. The number of BBL surgeries increased by 90.3% between 2015 to 2019. I still can't sit down unless I'm on my BBL pillow. The booty's there. It's kind of moving. It's, it's not there, not quite there yet. When the Kardashians became the Kardashians and when more and more celebrities started getting these procedures, this extra curvy look became the idealized body type. But mind you, these are celebrities who have the money to get the surgeries done by top surgeons and have the financial capability to afford any complications. What TikTok and the rest of social media is showing is regular people getting these procedures done with all their life savings. Not only are they risking their lives spending their savings on a butt fill that could literally kill them, but this trend is normalizing going under procedures to get the ideal body type. While of course it's your body and you're the one ultimately responsible for it, I don't think this trend is making a positive impact, especially on the younger girls demographic on TikTok. Over 47.4% of TikTok users in the US are under 29. And when you think about how someone like me who only watches TikTok food videos can get BBL content pushed to my feed, imagine the impact on 12, 13 year old girls, or even worse, girls under 10. And this brings us to the next topic, of why is the body trend problematic, the evolution of the ideal body type, and understanding it through the male gaze. Okay, to fully grasp the problematic side to the BBL trend, let's brush up on a little history of the evolution of the ideal female body type. In the 1910s, the it girl had a long neck, sloped shoulders, and a tiny waist, thanks to the corset. The 1920s was the flapper girl, Flat chest was all the rage. Sad, really, because that would have been the golden age for me. The 30s gave curves a little comeback, while in the 40s, military shoulders became the look du jour. The 50s was all about the hourglass, where ads of the time even advised skinny women to take weight gain supplements to fill their curves. Then in the 60s, thin is in. The 70s was about a slim-hipped, flat stomach body, and the 80s was about the supermodel body. The 90s continued with the obsession with a small and slim frame. Then in the 2000s, washboard abs were in. Then came the 2010s and beyond that is all about the base and booty, which is not problematic on its own, but the fact that no one's butt can naturally look like Kim's because they aren't is problematic. I hope that going through the long evolution of ideal female body types over the last 100 years, you can start to realize how no body type will be 
the ideal body type for eternity and how silly it is to risk your life or hate your body for a trend that will probably be gone in a few years. The root of the problem is that the BBL epidemic is normalizing that it is okay to risk your health to go for an ideal body shape. As the ideal historically shifted from curvy to slim to curvy to slim back and forth, it just shows if you determine your worth based on how well your body conforms to the ever-changing beauty standards, you are setting yourself up to chase after something that you'll never be able to catch. And a lot of these women fell victim to the trend and the male gaze, which was introduced by filmmaker and theorist Laura Mulvey in 1973, where in a world ordered by sexual imbalance, pleasure in looking has been split between active male and passive female, that women are objectified to adhere to the heterosexual male's sexual fantasies. It's a reason that in films, there are these close-up shots to a particular part of the women's body. It's a reason that women wear the most inconvenient outfits in film to reveal their body parts. It's a reason that you only see women posing to show their objectified body parts in ways that men don't. Stand up and give me a twirl. Now? Yeah, just a quick spin. Oh, sure. It's not just in films, but heavily ingrained into our culture and thoughts. As girls, we constantly worry about how we look because we instinctively always feel like we are being looked at. And we are. In a way, the ideal BBL body type is an extension of the male gaze, as a huge booty is a sexualized symbol of being sexy and attractive. Like, would people spend a fortune on a butt fill that might kill them if it weren't to be looked at? Probably not. But who are the ultimate people to show these new butts to? To other women or to attract the opposite sex? Although a lot of us hate to admit it where we claim we do things just to look good for ourselves. But the definition of what looks good is heavily impacted by the male gaze and already ingrained into our subconscious mind. Sadly, the BBL body is not the only toxic body trend. Growing up in Asia, I've experienced many different body trends that are very different from those in North America, yet still very problematic. Most of the Asian body trends have to do with smaller faces, A4 paper-sized waist, collarbones that you can put coins in, the same type of infatuation with the ideal body type exists cross culture where women try to achieve the ideal through dangerous surgical procedures like face slimming injections and jaw shaving surgeries. Yes, you heard it right. It's a popular cosmetic procedure where the bone in your jaws get shaved to achieve a pointier face. And although these procedures might seem preposterous to someone who grew up in the Western culture, Mind you, getting butt filled the size of two basketballs is just as ludicrous to people in Asia. Blindly following the ideal body standards might be normalized within the culture, but from an outside observer's perspective, it seems a little ridiculous. So I hope that by introducing a shift in cultures, you can also gain some insights into why our bodies should be treated much, much better than to be used to follow a trend. Thoughts and takeaways. Body ideals, like everything else in pop culture, are a trend. And who knows what the new ideal will be in the future? Who knows what the next new hot surgical procedure will be? And very sadly, who knows how many more people will die from chasing after the ideal beauty when they forgot that they were already born beautiful. I completely respect that it is your body, your choice, and there's nothing wrong with changing your body in a way that you want to. But when making the decision, try to also reflect upon the motivation behind the change. Are you changing to appeal to the male gaze? Are you changing to conform to a beauty standard? Are you changing because everyone else is starting to look a certain way? Are you aware of all the risks involved? The media's idea of beauty is subjective and changes, but confidence is always in style. So that's all I wanted to share with you all today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Insta to join my journey to confidence. Love and be kind to yourselves. And I will see you next week. Bye. This is the end.